I, I grew up in um, a, a small village on Dartmoor. Like, no, nothing happened, like, to give you an idea of how little happened. Um, the most exciting thing that happened when I was growing up was when I was seven, for a brief period in my village, there was a bull in a field. <laughs> I was terrified of this bull. I used to walk past and my dad would go, oh, don't worry about that. He's more scared of you than you are of him. And I used to think, no, he fucking is a mate. <laughs> The only way he's more scared of me than I am of him is if he has a phobia of Wellington boots with eyes on the front. Because <laughs> my dad is not a logical man. He's not like, like, I was driving with you the other day. He got lost. He said, oh, I said, oh, your problem is you've got no sense of direction. He said, no, that's not an issue, is it? Because you know how it works. If you lose one of your senses, one of your other senses will improve to compensate. <laughs> I'm not sure that is how it works, no. I'm not sure you can sit here and go, well, no, I haven't got a sense of direction, but I tell you what, my sense of occasion is fucking awesome. <laughs> I don't even know what that would be. Presumably he could just turn up at any gathering and just know what it is. Just go, oh, I joined 37th birthday party. <laughs> How do I know? Well, I've got an amazing sense of occasion, actually, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know any of you. No, why am I here? I'm lost. <laughs> Better that way than the other way, obviously, having an amazing sense of direction, but no sense of occasion. You can. Find the funeral, we go dress for paintballing, no one wants that. <laughs> not a logical man. Not, I, I got burgled recently. I, I don't know if you've been burgled. When you get burgled, everyone says the same thing to you. Everyone says, oh, tell you what the worst thing about being burgled is. It's knowing that a stranger's been through your things. And you go, no. That's not the worst thing about being burgled, is knowing a stranger has my things. <laughs> If they had just been browsing, I wouldn't have given a shit. <laughs> if you offer me two options, one, come home, my laptop is stolen, or two, come home to find a stranger in my room, go, I like this T-shirt, but uh, <laughs> have you got it in a large? <laughs> I phoned my dad, I said, I've been burgled. He said, well, you know why you've been burgled and we haven't? It's because we're in the neighbourhood watch. <laughs> I said, no, it isn't. It's because you live in Devon and I live in London. <laughs> I mean, also, you live in a small village in the middle of nothing, but mile upon mile of moorland. I mean, no one's going to burgle you, because whatever they took, it wouldn't cover their petrol money. <laughs> I, mean, I don't understand the neighbour watch. From what I can tell, it's a club that you join. Then if you see a crime being committed, you report it to the police. What were these people doing before they joined the neighbourhood watch? Let's <laughs> go, the Joneses are being burgled. Well, if only there was something I could do about it. <laughs> I mean, I imagine there's a number I could phone, but I wouldn't know, because I'm not in a club. <laughs> From what I can tell, the only proactive thing the Neighbourhood Watch does is once a month they have a meeting. All that does, it tells burglars for one night out of every 30. <laughs> All houses are empty and unwatched. <laughs> there's this paranoia about crime back in Devon, where I'm from, for no reason. Like, I went back recently, went to the local co-op, right, and it's a tiny co-op in the middle of nowhere, right? But I went up to the desk and there was a sign on the desk that said, did you know, we now do legal advice. And obviously my first reaction was, no. I mean, to be honest, I was pleasantly surprised you did sugar puffs. So. <laughs> Why is the co-op now doing legal advice? Is there just too many people coming in, going, I have 10 silk cuts, a Vionetta, and I've killed a man. <laughs> Can you help? Well, luckily, we now do legal advice, yeah? <laughs> or before Maureen, I'm off to the Old Bailey. <laughs> when do you think it is in your in trial that think, do you know what, I probably shouldn't have chosen the co-op as my lawyers. <laughs> is it when they're cross-examining a key witness while wearing a name badge that says, Kevin, I'm here to help, is that what it is? <laughs> so when you think, I should have gone with Summerfield after all. I don't know. I don't like these shops that will just do other things that are completely unrelated. The one that annoys me the most, chemists that then sell tights. <laughs> Why are they doing that? Who is that for? Who is going to a chemist and going, what are my symptoms? Chilly legs, actually. Yeah. <laughs> do you do long johns? They're prescription only. I will take the tights. Also, while I'm here, can I get a lollipop that is also a whistle? <laughs> You do do them? Awesome, because I'm a diabetic referee. That is exactly what I'm looking for. <laughs> I 
So it was my dad's fault. That I, it was my dad's fault we didn't go on good holidays. Well, we never went on good holidays because he was afraid of flying. As one of those people go, it's not natural, is it? If men are fly, we'd have wings, but that's for birds. That's not for humans. That's a terrible argument, isn't it? That's like going, do you want a glass of wine? No, because I can't open the bottle because I haven't got my own curly finger. <laughs> We, every year, right, we'd either go camping or narrowboating, right? Most families go away to get away from it. The it we were getting away from was comfort and happiness. <laughs> I, uh, we went narrowboating in Birmingham. Birmingham, yeah, because my dad said, oh, it's perfect for narrowboating because it's actually got more miles of canal than Venice, which implies he'd considered a holiday to Venice, <laughs> but felt it probably wasn't canally enough for his tastes. <laughs> We went on the, on the narrowboat. I don't know if you've been on a narrowboat. If you haven't been on a narrowboat, what it is, it's a boat that is so shit <laughs> that its main selling point is that it's narrow. <laughs> no one cares about the width of your boat. Your boat is either narrow enough to fit in a river, that is a boat, or it is too wide, that is a bridge. <laughs> and what they've done with this boat, right, is uh, that's famous for being narrow, is they've decided to put a house in it. And the way they've done that is everything folds into something else. So make a cup of tea in the morning. It's like the worst Transformers movie you have ever seen. <laughs> yeah, well, first I'll get up and fold up my bed, cos that is also the kettle. <laughs> then I'll get my milk from my fridge come walk-in wardrobe. Where's my mug? My sister is having a bath in it. <laughs> 